the Red Sneaker Writers Podcast. News, interviews, and writing tips for people who are serious about having a writing career and want some practical knowledge to help them achieve it. Your host is the nationally best-selling author of more than 50 books, William Bernhardt. Hello, Red Sneaker Writers. This is episode 43, going out on April 20th, 2020. The highlight of this episode is my interview with internationally best-selling author Steve Barry. Steve's historical thrillers, many of them featuring his series character, Cotton Malone, have been insanely popular. Steve has sold more than 25 million books in 51 different countries. As I conducted this interview, by Zoom conference, of course, his latest book, The Warsaw Protocol, was number two on the New York Times bestseller list. I was amazed, even as I conducted the interview, by not only how much insight Steve had to offer, but how much honesty. I think you'll be as floored by this interview as I was. I'll also be offering writing tips and news from the publishing world. But before I get to that, I just wanted to say thank you to so many of you who have reached out to me since the last podcast, responding to the free book offer, of course but also taking the time to tell me that you've been listening to the podcast and enjoying and benefiting from it. My favorite email this time comes from Scott Byatt, who hails from what he calls the great southern land of Australia. Let me share just a brief passage from Scott's email. He writes, I have listened to the back catalog of episodes and have found it stands out against other writing podcasts I've heard. Your insight from experience, positivity, and encouragement to keep going for people like me who are very new to the writer's journey has been invaluable. Scott, thanks so much for writing. That means so much. And let me just tell you why. You know, we do these podcasts and send them out into cyberspace, but there's still no truly reliable way of calculating not only how many people are listening to it, but where they are. So when I get all the email from not only my home country, but New Zealand or Australia, it just reminds me not only of the power of this new format, the podcast, but also the enormous power of the written word. There's a reason why we're all writing or aspiring to write when we could be doing other things, even when we're trapped at home. But we choose to write, not, to paraphrase JFK, not because it is easy, but because it is hard, because it's challenging, and because we have seen in our own lives the transformative power of the written word. So who wouldn't want to participate that? Who wouldn't want to be part of the great conversation? I think that's what it's all about. And speaking of that great conversation, did I mention I've got a new book out? It's Twisted Justice. You can pre-order it now, and it'll be on full release by the time the next podcast happens. Twisted Justice is the fourth book in my series featuring lawyer Daniel Pike, except this one is way different from the ones that came before, because this time, Pike isn't the defense attorney. He's the defendant. So please check that out. We've got other things to talk about this time, too. But first, the news. Given that most of the world is in lockdown right now and most bookstores are closed, it's amazing how much news there is from the world of books and publishing. Let me start with the sales report, which is largely the same as it was in the previous podcast. Juvenile nonfiction has shot up in sales, but virtually everything else is down. Here's one aspect of that that surprised me. Audiobooks are seeing decreased sales. I thought they would shoot forward because, you know, it's a digital form. You don't have to go to the bookstore to get them. People are taking walks every day, but apparently the audiobook sales are down and the uh, the generally accepted explanation for that is that few people are commuting right now. Without that drive to work and back or subway ride or whatever, people are seeing less need for audiobooks. Ebook sales, however, are seeing a 
significantly increased percentage of sales. Now, just to be clear, I'm not saying books overall are selling in greater numbers, but I'm saying that the percentage of people buying ebooks as opposed to print books has significantly increased. There's a great article about this on the, in the new publishing standard, largely focusing on Europe, but it's really a worldwide phenomenon, and I'll give you more evidence of that in just a second. They've done a pretty significant analysis, and what they've found is that thousands, in fact, tens of thousands of readers who previously resisted digital books are now converting to ebooks for obvious reasons. They can't get out and go to the local bookstore or prefer not to. And, you know, once you've been sucked into the ease and convenience of buying a book online and being having it in your hands in about 10 seconds, well, these may be converts for life. A significant ebook publisher, Open Road Media, a favorite of mine because they own most of my early 10 or 12 books, all the early Ben Kincaid novels are at Open Road. They have seen a 50% jump in the past few weeks in ebook revenue. Bookwire also reports a 50% jump. Kobo, which of course sells books not only in the U.S. but all around the world, is reporting a 140% jump in ebook sales. Most libraries have all but stopped purchasing print books during this crisis and have shifted their budget to acquiring digital books because that's what they're lending right now. I've talked before about Storytel which is a Swedish-based digital audiobook and ebook subscription service. It's very popular in Europe. In the first quarter of 2020, Storytel reported 45% growth over the last year. This is news that, of course, is particularly significant to Red Sneaker writers, many of whom are publishing with smaller, non-Big Five publishing houses or are self-publishing, or will, once they get that book finished, well, there's been this ongoing debate about whether you should be Amazon exclusive or whether you should go wide. And this is discussed in that new publishing standard article I mentioned too. The clear conclusion, this may be the time to go wide because people are buying ebooks and buying them from a variety of places, not just Amazon, but other sellers as well. Amazon may always be number one, but the others are worth having books at. Last week, the Book Industry Study Group reported on the results of a study they conducted, a survey actually, trying to determine the impact of this pandemic on the industry. Most of the people who responded to the survey, which are mostly book publishers, reported lost revenue, uh, that there's been a decrease in their orders, and that they're trying various things to cut costs. Some of you may have seen the post on Facebook, because this was shared all over the place, from a fiction editor at Tor. As some of you probably know, Tor is a science fiction imprint at Macmillan, one of the big five companies. And he wrote about why publishers are in so much trouble right now, basically. And uh, the the bottom line conclusion, he goes into much more detail, but the bottom line, traditional publishing still depends in large, you know, to a large degree on print book sales. And without print book sales, they're all finding themselves in serious trouble. Now, you could argue that this has been coming for a long time, but this latest worldwide crisis has really made it hit home. I have talked about Mike Shatskin before. He's one of the leading gurus in publishing on the business aspect of publishing. He gave an interview, and his conclusion is basically that the virus is accelerating what was going to happen anyway. These inevitable changes in the publishing world responding to the growing digital digitalization of books and audiobooks. Mike says, quote, the whole notion of printing lots and lots of books in advance and sitting on them in a warehouse is going to look a lot less attractive for a lot of stock, end quote. Well, of course he's right. And this is hitting all across the board. I mentioned 
last time that the comic book industry was in great disarray as a result of the, uh, really, the only major distributor of comic books, Diamond, saying that they were going to stop shipping. This has just gotten worse and worse. A recent New York Times article says that for comic books, the coronavirus may be, quote, an extinction-level event. Their conclusion is basically that the industry was already fragile. They work on razor-thin margins at every level, including those local comic book stores, which are where a lot of people are getting their print comic books. And with nobody to shift comic books to them and no customers in the stores, they're seeing some hard times. A lot of them are being very innovative, offering drive-through services to businesses that aren't really equipped for it, guys going out with masks and gloves to deliver your comic books. But of course, if there's no product, then there's nothing to sell. Just two days ago, as I record this, DC Comics, one of the two largest providers of comic books, it's DC and Marvel, of course, DC has said they will start shipping comics again on April 28th. Maybe not as many titles, maybe probably not printing as many, but one way or another, they're going to try and prop this industry up by getting those books out there. Whether you read comic books or you don't, independent bookstores are in pretty much a similar position. They tend to operate on very thin margins, and as a result, they're just not equipped to go for months without any kind of profit. Community support is going to be critical here. A lot of local bookstores are holding online events, uh, like our Oklahoma City's wonderful independent Full Circle Books is still trying to do author events, just doing them online. Many bookstores are holding fundraisers of one kind or another. This is the time to reach out your hand to the people in your community, the booksellers and others who love books. Booksellers, writers, Anybody in our world, everybody could use a little bit of help right now. Rally around the people who make our business a success. Make it work for all of us. The largest U.S. printer in the United States has filed Chapter 11. In other words, they're taking a form of bankruptcy. Now, just to be clear, we're talking about printers now, not publishers, printers. The second largest printer in the United States, Quad, has closed its book printing facilities. They've been trying to sell the company for months. But the largest one, LSC Communications, has filed for bankruptcy. LSC employs 22,000 people, most of whom are likely to be looking for new jobs right now. Again, when you can reach out your hand to people in our industry, do so. Even Barnes & Noble, our last remaining national bookstore chain, is seeing some kind of problems. They have been late on their royalty payments. At least one distributor, Draft2Digital, went ahead and made its royalty payments to its publishers and authors on time, saying they would supply the Barnes & Noble segment when Barnes & Noble paid them. They would just do a separate additional payment. Barnes & Noble says the reason they're late is not a cash flow problem, but just that they're adapting to this new working environment, everybody working at home, working remotely. I'm sure that has complicated things. Of course, that's complicated things for everybody. Why Barnes & Noble is the one bookseller that's laid on its royalty payments, I don't know. Anyway, that's enough stuff about the coronavirus publishing world. Let's talk about a few other stories that may not relate to the pandemic. Harlequin has created some firestorms by adding a so-called non-disparagement clause to their freelancer contracts. This clause is exactly what it sounds like, a clause in the contract with the author that prevents them from saying, not only verbally, but of course more potently online on social media, negative things, derogatory statements about the publisher. And As the clause reads on its face, it applies not just while this book is in print, but basically forever. Well, 